Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos or just welcome if you've never seen me before. I've been thinking about video concepts where someone else tells me what to make for a day and then I realized that my roommate, who is also my best friend for those of you guys who don't know, Casey's birthday was coming up soon. So I was like, that seems like a fun video idea. Plus she's the perfect person to do it with because she's here all the time. Plus she's also vegan, so she's more likely to appreciate my cooking if you know what I mean. Casey isn't comfortable with being fully on camera though, so she'll just be here a little. But I had a lot of fun making all this stuff and we had a lot of fun eating it all, even despite my many, many failures along the way. Also, I don't want anyone to comment about how generous of a friend I am or like you don't have a friend that would do this for you because let's all remember I am making money from this, I'm getting content out of this, and I also ate the things with her. Plus, we have a lot of the same food preferences, so like this is all stuff that I like a lot also. So let's get into the video, into the breakfast most important meal of the day. So first things first, we're gonna make some pancakes, birthday cake pancakes. Finally using this mix. I do like this Wonder Milk, found it at a grocery outlet. It actually recommends applesauce on the box for like the vegan option, but I feel like flaxseed would be better. So I'm using flaxseed. She's coagulating. For the smoothie, I wanted to get out the strawberries now so that they can start defrosting because it's whole strawberries, you know? The flaxseed is quite thick now, so we're gonna... You know, I forgot the important thing about mixes. You should add less milk to start off because you can't add more mix. You know, you can always add more milk. I'm gonna make one big pancake. Wait, I have to put butter. It's about to go crazy. So crazy. I love this oat butter. It's so good. It's very spreadable right out of the fridge. Also, first pancake. I don't think it was hot enough. I'm gonna be honest. That was too crazy. Now I'm scared. This is why I can't cook in the morning time. Definitely stupider in the morning. Yeah, this seems too thin. I feel like I have to add some flour. Why did I do this? Already off to a rocky start. No. No, not at all, boy. What the hell? Okay, we're trying again. We. I added some flour and some baking powder. No, this seems thin. I just don't know anymore. These are ugly. They suck. <laughs> so, after thinking about it... We are now making a new mix. We're making a mix from scratch. And it's gonna be so much better. One tablespoon baking powder. One tablespoon? Okay. Really? A tablespoon? A tablespoon. Okay. Why not? I love a homemade mix. I honestly kind of knew I should have done this because it's always better. I was just being silly, you know? I was like, I want to use up this mix and that's like easier. I'm rating this tasty recipe for you. Tasty. The website. Ooh. <gasps> It's so like baking powdery, like carbonated. The consistency of this is crazy talk. It feels like science. I want you to be amazing. <gasps> what the hell? It's like a yeast dough. Oh my god, I don't trust tasty. What is this? It looks good though. That's a pancake. I tried to cut it in half to see if it was cooked all the way, but it looks like it is. This is also, you know, first pancake syndrome. It's always ugly. Mmm, it smells good. Mmm, mmm. That is delicious. I like this recipe. Okay, now for the smoothie time. We're making a strawberry banana smoothie, but I want it to be like one of those like really creamy smoothies that vegans can never get at a restaurant or whatever, like a fast food place. Something like that where it has like yogurt in it and stuff. So then we have some frozen bananas. I froze many bananas. Bananas in here, lots of them, let me tell you. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this is also for me. So uh, that's why it's also a bigger smoothie. Everything that I'm making is also for me. So, and I got this oat gurt. 
at Sprouts, you know, I've never had their yogurt before and I'm not saying I didn't buy it for just took a picture. Um, I didn't buy it for any reason other than it was the cheapest. It was the best value there, you know, for what it was. It's good. It's not sweet. Is it not supposed to be sweet? Oh, it has added sugars, but it's not very sweet. But that's good though, because this smoothie might be really sweet. Okay. And then I'm using this next milk, the whole fat one. Make it seem more like a milkshake, you know? But I'll just use some of this if I need to use more. I can use this, which is more of like a normal milk, you know, like 2% milk. Oh my god, it's so pretty. I'm gonna try it. It's really good. I think it could use a little more yogurt, yogurty flavor, and a little bit of milk. You know, it could be more strawberry ish, it could be more banana ish. Hmm. I'll just put a little bit more banana. There's so much smoothie. That's okay. Let's go. It'll be cute in this little mason jar with handle. Mason jar, mason jar, marg. Gotta make it cute. So we gotta pick out the best pancakes. Oh, they are actually, they look really good. Like, they're not bad. A stack of pancakes. Casey loves whipped cream. So I got some oat milk, whipped cream. I mean, who doesn't love whipped cream? But, like, especially. I love this little cat. Whipped cream cap for the whipped cream. We're gonna put syrup in one. This butter is so good, let me tell you. Like, literally so good. Okay, so we have that, and we have the smoothie. Now it's whipped cream time. Ah, is that too much? It's a little much. It looks like less when I was doing it. And then I was gonna go poop, poop. <laughs> she also loves chocolate chips, so is this gonna make it look worse or better? <gasps> better, yay, that's cute, isn't it? And one little chocolate chip in each of the little dollops. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Straw for birthday, 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 have a birthday. Oh, that's so cute. And now Casey will give her thoughts on the meal. What are your thoughts on the meal? What meal? <laughs> <laughs> the breakfast. Oh, I thought we already did this. We we're didn't? re-recording it. Oh. <laughs> uh, the, the pancakes were super delicious. New recipe, you know. Tasted like buttermilk, so it was quite good. And I like the whipped cream touches of it. The smoothie was super cute, obviously. Look at it. Delicious. Could have been more yogurty, but it was good. Or more strawberry. Maybe? More the strawberries could have been riper. Yeah, but it was good. <laughs> But before we get on with the rest of the video, I want to take a quick minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a wine service that wants to influence the way we perceive wine from being kind of intimidating and sometimes wine culture can feel kind of exclusive to being more about having fun drinking wine and finding what wines work for you and your particular preferences and lifestyle, which obviously fits very well into my content, so I'm happy to have them sponsor a video. The Bright Tellers website has a seven question quiz. It just asks you about your different flavors that you like, the way that you like to drink wine to help them figure out what wines they think would be best for you. After you're done with the wines in your box, you can rate them on the website and then they can further narrow down your algorithm to help you find even better matches. I was glad to see that you could click like a wine newbie as an option because that's definitely me. Like I'm down to try anything when it comes to wine, but I really know nothing. If I was gonna pick wine out at the store, I would most likely just pick based off of the design on the bottle, if it looks cool or not. And I've tried three of the wines out of my box so far. I had a little wine tasting night with my parents because they were about to leave for a trip and be gone for a while. And they both love wine and wine tasting, so I thought it would be fun. I let them pick out the three that they would want to try. You want some veggies behind you? <laughs> Honestly, this is the best experience I've had with wine tasting for sure. I mean, it makes sense because it's based off of 
my preferences. I think the red blend was my favorite and the rosé might be second. I really like the rosé though. It has a tasting note of watermelon and right away when I smelled it, I was like, it smells like watermelon candy. They give you these wine education cards. They have like the different tasting notes for each of the bottles, the recommended serving temperature, suggested pairings and where they come from. So whether you're like me and you know nothing about wine and you want to figure out what your taste is with wine or if you feel like you know everything about wine and your taste but you just want to try some new bottles, have them delivered to your door, you can click the link in the description and you can take advantage of their limited time offer of $100 off a subscription with Bright Sellers. Thank you to Bright Sellers again for sponsoring this video and we will get on to the next meal. I have this ciabatta bread that I got from Sprouts. I've always wanted to make one of those sandwiches where you have like a big loaf of bread and this isn't that big, but you know, and you cut it in half and make a sandwich that way. You know what I mean? Oh God, this is gonna be harder than I thought. Trying my best. It may be a little bit thicker on this side. Casey loves to have a sandwich every single day of her life. It's like her reason for living. So of course we had to make a sandwich for lunch. What I want to do is put these, oh shit, that barely even fits on there. Put some like olive oil maybe, not maybe, I'm really doing it. Salt, salt, bread. I'm gonna put it in the oven to toast. I have heirloom tomatoes from Trader Joe's that I wanted to use because they just look so fun. I'm going to give Maple the butts. She likes tomato. And I'm not putting the butts on the sandwich. I also want to have thinly sliced red onion. Thinly slicing this red onion so you can just like have those cute little thinly sliced little strings of onion. You know what I mean. Can't you also like soak them in water first to soften the onion flavor or something? But we both really like onions, so is it necessary? I'll do it though. I'll do it. I'm not gonna do it. I just decided I'm not gonna do it. Look at this cute little lettuce. It's so cute. Oh man, I may have forgotten how crazy boil goes. And now we're here, but that's okay. I'll eat the more burnt part, so. Okay, so we have two kinds of cheeses. We're gonna just layer them on there. Hope that they melt. I'm just spreading it out in case that makes it melt better. I don't know. Ooh, I don't know how I feel about that Trader Joe's cheese now that I'm eating it again. It's got a sweetness to it that I don't understand. This smoky Gouda, whatever it's called. Ooh, it smells smoky. It smells good. Cheese, cheese. Yes, that looks absolutely beautiful. I don't know what you're talking about. And then I'm just gonna put it back in the oven, but with it off, just for a sec. I got this Tabitha Brown spread. Tabitha Brown line at Target. Look it up, okay? Oh, and I thought it'd be great for this. You know, we were shopping and I was like, oh, you should pick out a spread for me to put in your sandwich of for this video. So this is the one. It's lemon garlic aioli. It seems like it's basically like, you know, like a mayonnaise. It looks like mayonnaise. I've heard good things about her line. I've only tried the hummus and it was really good. Like a dill garlic lemon hummus. I'm gonna eat it on a snap pea. It is good. I don't want to toast it anymore, so I'm just gonna give, like, give up on the melting the cheese. Oh, I just realized if I put all the cheese like that, where do I put the mayonnaise? You know, I'm a lot stupider than I remembered. I'm not built for this life. I'm maybe gonna just transfer these over here so I can have a spot to put the mayonnaise on. Okay, and then the spread. I feel like the mayonnaise aspect of it could be better. The flavor is there and I like it, but I like, you know, I wish that like Tabitha could collab with like follow your heart mayonnaise and then I think it would be better. This bread is not for spreading mayonnaise on, but that's okay. It looks a bit chaotic, I'll be honest. Okay, I have three different kinds of tofurkey meats. We're gonna start with the ham for no reason, but it's right here. You know, I don't know that tofurkey is the best slices, but they're just, they're out there. You know, they're out there, they're putting out product. Not a lot of other people can say that. What am I ever like talking about? But I'm just saying, I'm not seeing a lot of other options out there, especially affordable. Um, that's an important factor of purchasing for me. Pepper on the tomato and some garlic and herb seasoning and also some salt. And now some of the, this one, the plain, the smoked hickory, hickory smoked, whatever you want to call it. And some onion. 
Ooh, I'm so excited. Something about seeing the onion on there. Maybe it's like the colors. Last but not least, peppered tofurcos. You know the drill. We're gonna go diagonal on these. Don't ask me why, because I won't have an answer. Mustard. I have to hold back because I love mustard too much. Lettuce, lettuce, lettuce. Hope I'm not forgetting anything. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. See, I'm not that selfless. Like, this is for me too. We gotta put the butt on and then flip her over because I made it backwards. Okay. It's a sandwich. <laughs> it's a sand. This reminds me of Adventure Time. Oh god. There do be a lot of bread, but she does love bread. She does love a bready sandwich, so. Focus on the damn sandwich or I'm gonna- Should I cut it this way? No. This way? No. This way? Maybe. Check it, check it, check it. Ooh, yes, it looks a lot better like this. <gasps> it's massive. Okay, so the sandwich. Thoughts on the sandwich? Um, it was very good. Very thick. Very bread. Very bready and delicious. It's more elaborate than your everyday sandwich and it's very fun. A lot of ingredients. It could have had less bread, if we're being honest. I mean, yeah, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I forgot the sprouts, which was a big disappointment. No. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> yeah, but I bought them for this. Oh. Well, I think I used them later. We used them up, yeah. Okay, so I used Mary's Test Kitchen recipe for the Korean corn dogs, and I've now learned that Korean corn dogs, the main difference between those and American corn dogs is that the batter is a yeasted dough for Korean corn dogs, and as far as I can tell from the internet, doesn't have cornmeal in it, which I think is kind of funny. But I got all confused because the first video that comes up when you type in vegan Korean corn dogs doesn't use the normal Korean corn dog batter recipe. They use like a baking soda cornmeal recipe. So I don't know why that video got so popular. But anyways, if you've ever seen Korean corn dogs before, they put cheese inside of the corn dog and sometimes they do like a half and half where it's like half meat, half cheese, or they'll do all cheese or all meat, whatever. So I decided to do two that were half and half and then two that were just the corn dog, just the meat. Unfortunately for me, the two different stores that I went to neither had any like block cheese. So I, <laughs> I had the idea of using Using sliced cheese like this and just stacking it on each other and cutting it kind of to the shape definitely made it more complicated and I didn't have a lot of faith in this method at all. I had low expectations for myself. I was I was honestly, this part of the video scared me the most. Like I was like, I'm gonna F this up real quick. But you know, you'll see how it turns out. Oh, and also the other elements of Korean corn dogs that make Korean corn dogs different from American corn dogs is that a lot of the time they put hash browns or like little pieces of potatoes in the batter, which is just like genius. I don't know, like, I mean, of course. If you can add potato to something, Thing, like why wouldn't you add it especially fried potato but i used some frozen fries and just cut them up also panko breadcrumbs sprinkling onto the batter so it's kind of a whole it's definitely a whole situation you know you got the there's a lot of steps to this for sure i had a lot of trouble with my batter at first i think i didn't measure my flour correctly because it was just too thin it was just falling off of the corn dog so i added more flour to it and then it was somewhat better i also noticed as i was doing this that the batter was sticking better to the cheese than the corn dog part. So I ended up sprinkling some flour on the meat part before trying to put the batter on and it kind of helped. I think I just maybe measured the dough poorly. I don't know. Here I'm frying. Casey's really testing me for this video because cake is one of my nemesis um, and also frying things. And I had to do both of those for this video, but you know, it was fun. I like to challenge myself, so. Honestly, I was so impressed with how they stayed together. Like I thought they would fall apart. I was so scared, but they actually all stayed together pretty well. I mostly fried them one by one because I was scared. I wanted to be able to take my time. I also mixed in the leftover little bits of fries with the leftover of dough and then fried that as like a little potato pancake. I should have mixed in my leftover breadcrumbs to it too, but I, just, I don't know why I didn't think of that. 
And now moving on to the raboki. Um, this is the Via Vegans recipe and it's honestly pretty easy. That's why I was pretty excited for this. Not only had I had versions of this meal before, so I knew generally what it's supposed to taste like and I had most of the ingredients for it already. You basically just boil the rice cakes. While those are starting to boil, you mix together the sauce, which is gochujang, tamari, fish sauce optional. I actually had some vegan fish sauce, so I used some. Gochugaru, garlic, MSG or mushroom broth powder. I didn't have mushroom broth powder, but I had a mushroom seasoning that I thought it's not the same, but it'll add some mushroom flavor, you know? It can't make it worse. Some sweetener, and I used brown sugar, sesame oil, and then green onions, and obviously the ramen. I don't know why I used such a big bowl to mix together the sauce. And this turned out really good. I've only had like pre-made takbaki, like frozen, to compare it to, so you know. I'm no connoisseur, but I think it turned out really good. And you also put sesame seeds and shredded cabbage on top as a garnish. I forgot the sesame seeds. Oops, uh, I can't believe that of me. But then also, you know, I didn't want to buy a whole cabbage from the store for this because I didn't want to deal with having it afterward. So I wanted to buy pre-shredded cabbage, but they only had purple cabbage and I thought that'd be weird. So I just left out the cabbage. But I can see how that would be a good addition, like the crunch, you know? So next time. Dinner time. Thoughts? Um... <laughs> I really love the corn dogs. They were very delicious and fun. Never had such a thing as a vegan. And I really like the cheese. I want more cheese dogs. <laughs> I kind of wanted cheese that actually stretches a little bit though. Yeah, true. It didn't stretch at all. It was, still tastes good. Yeah. And the um, takbaki and the ramen was super delicious, but a bit too spicy for me because <laughs> oh, I'm me. a baby. Yeah. It was good. I liked it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now starting the tiri tirimaleches or uh, tres, tres masu fusion dessert. You know, I was real scared for this because there's there's only a couple recipes of a tres leches tiramisu fusion dessert online and definitely no vegan ones. So I used like several recipes mixed together to try to make this. Um, and you know, did it work out? No, but did I make it work? Maybe, I mean, who's to say really? Did we eat it all? Definitely yes, so I mean, does it matter? Anyways, so right now I'm making the cake. I just found a vegan cake recipe online that seemed like it would be good. You know, it worked, but I don't know if it was the best cake recipe, so feel free to send your favorite vegan cake recipes my way because I'd love to get better at cake. Cake is not a, my strong suit. Baking in general, I fear it really everything always goes wrong for me and then for the liquid part the milk part you know i did use a non-vegan tres leches tiramisu recipe for this and just replaced everything with the vegan versions of that so i had sweetened condensed coconut milk evaporated coconut milk i used the vegan milks that i had and then you add your instant coffee after the cake is cooled a little bit you poke holes all over it and pour the liquid in and because i was trying to use different recipes and you know mix them together i ended up with way more liquid than I needed. I thought I I thought I was I thought I had it figured out, but I really didn't. And then you let that sit for a certain amount of hours that I'm gonna put on the screen because I don't remember what it is. And then when that's done sitting and absorbing into that cake, you make your topping. For the topping, I used a recipe for tiramisu topping, which is basically whipped cream, that cheese that I forgot the name of. It said you could just use cream cheese if you can't find that, so I bought some vegan cream cheese and powdered sugar, but I didn't realize that the vegan cream cheese that I bought was actually everything cream cheese. Um, and you know, that's my bad. It was the only cream cheese they had. So I just assumed it was like original flavor, you know? It was like at the end of my shopping trip and I was just tired, so I grabbed it. I think I expect everything cream cheese to have like an onion, like a picture of an onion and garlic on it, like be real obvious, you know? But anyways, then I just thought, you know, Tres Leches just has a topping of it just has like a whipped topping, right? So I was like, maybe I can just, I can just mix the whipped cream with the powdered sugar and that's the topping. It can't be bad, obviously. But I also didn't realize that you should defrost Cool Whip in the fridge 
and not on the counter. So it was no longer whipped cream, but just a sauce that tastes like whipped cream. Um, so this is what I mean by everything goes wrong when I bake, but I will not deny that it is my fault. <laughs> it's just, I don't have a knack for following instructions very well. So I used it anyways, and it really just looks like a marshmallow sauce. You know, those like marshmallow sauces you can buy and put on ice cream or whatever. And then I put the cocoa powder on it. And when I tried it right away, <laughs> It, it is just like a sauce on there. Like it's it's not, it's just a very saucy and not easy to scoop at all. But after setting in the fridge overnight, the whipped cream sauce actually does set quite a bit. It seems more like whipped cream. Tirima leches. Tiramisu. <laughs> Which do you prefer? Are you, are you asking me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This was your fault. <laughs> what? You gave me the most complicated prompt you could have given me. I just wanted to hear Masu. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. I didn't want to make lady fingers. You can't find vegan lady fingers and I didn't want to make them. You could have said no. <laughs> I could have said no. What are you saying? It was good. Yeah, it was still good. <laughs> I liked it. It's just the, 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 the lack of whip. One day I'll make the lady fingers by, from scratch. Ooh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, this does this dessert of sorts was very good because she made it sound bad, but then it was good. Right. You lower your expectations and then you are happy. <laughs> that's my life motto. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and getting to the end of it. Please take a moment to appreciate the illustrations done for this video by Casey. I'll link her Instagram down below if you want to give her a follow. Stick around for the next video next week. Subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. And even hit the bell if you want to be notified when I post one. And that's it. Love you guys. Bye. I think it looks absolutely delicious. What's more important is that I had fun making it, right?